Hello all. In this video, I'll be showing you what I've been tinkering with in the workshop recently. A pair of these flip stops of my own design, which I think steps things up a little. They're basically two segments with the rear providing micro adjust. Lock it down with the front section loosened, turn the red central thumb wheel, and you can creep the stop to exactly where you want, then lock down the front again. On the stop for my left hand fence, and only that one as I'm temporarily out of magnets, I made a secondary stop which makes absolutely sure the stop is flex free, even when butting heavy, rough sawn timber against it as I do when I'm making chair components. Ordinarily on my MFT fence I use these flip stops from bench dogs. These newer metal body ones do a much better job of reducing flex in the stop over the old plastic body ones, but there's still a little bit of flex there, and they offer no micro adjust version. The quick release lever is my own addition, by the way. What got me thinking about a new type of flip stop was reviewing this awesome mite offence from Hong Dui. Its stop is the party piece, and as you can see, has a secondary stop to keep things rock solid, plus has the buttery smooth micro adjust built in. I love using the thing, and I want a bit of that over on my MFT. Let's get into how I made mine then. I initially toyed with the idea of adding a micro adjust to the back end of my bench dog stops, but it'd look a bit janky, plus they all have this ridge that slots into a 6mm profile slot and it's a bit of a sloppy fit, so not lending itself to a micro adjust I think. Also their hole for the lever clamp or star knob is 6mm for M6 and so uses these type of T-nuts, the ones shaped just like the slot profile. I find them a bit prone to jamming now and again, so I want to use these flat type M5 sliding T-nuts. It occurred to me the ridge issue could be solved using round stock as this would naturally seat itself and align in the slot. As it happens, due to my using 20mm solid round stock as a feature on my chairs, I have a bunch of short length offcuts left over that I've been wondering what to do with. Along with the 20mm alley round bar, I've got an old well used piece of 8mm alley plate to make the actual flip stops from. As you can see, I already have the round bar in the cutting jig here. At the end you can see my experimental trench cut through the stock, leaving around 5mm thickness at the bottom. I just wanted to check everything remained solid with that much material removed, and thankfully it did. So what's my major malfunction then? Why the hell am I doing this with a plunge saw? Well, I don't have a CNC mill to do the job sensibly, plus the miter saw, which would be my secondary choice, is still on site for a fitting job. So I mark out, strap down and clench cheeks as I cut blind. Madness. Still, we muddle through. Oop, still a bit hot that, silly boy. Nope, still hot. I repeat that again to create two more parts the same, just slightly longer. Then, onto the bandsaw to cut the two flip stops. It's slow and steady with the alley through the bandsaw, so you'll probably notice I've sped that up quite a lot. You can see there, as the parts get smaller, I start to use a push stick and another piece to keep things under control. A bandsaw is actually really predictable through aluminium, but even so, I don't like to take any chances this close to the blade. All the parts for the mounts and the flip stops themselves get it going over with a file to deburr and ease over the edges. Likewise, all the parts get marked for their respective holes. Every piece gets drilled with 5mm through holes for M5 screws. The only exception being one of the holes through the length of one of the mount pieces which gets drilled to 4.2mm and then tapped for M5 thread to enable a screw for micro adjust. I do have a bench drill that would do a more accurate job of these holes but I don't have a vice for it yet. As such I just went at it by hand. Not perfect but good enough. The little red thumb wheels for the micro adjust are drilled and tapped for M5 right through. These are what you'd find on one end of a bicycle seat post quick release clamp finally found a use for some of them. The last drilling task is an 8mm hole 4mm deep for a magnet in one of the flip stops and another piece of alley round bar to create a magnetic secondary stop. To fix the magnets I use a few drops of superglue. I normally use epoxy to secure magnets but I fancied seeing how well the superglue holds. It's less faff and messy than epoxy so we'll see how it gets on. Pieces deburred and holes all drilled, they're essentially ready for assembly but to make them look a little less homebrew I give them a polish. With these mount pieces it's made nice and easy by adding a screw with a couple of nuts to give me something to hold in the drill chuck. I send each piece through a 600, 800 and 1000 grit sand. Then clean with silvo. And finally a buff off with a rag. This gives a nice shiny but satin finish. You can of course keep going through higher grits and finish with a polishing wheel for a mirror finish but not for me in this instance. 
So as you can see, I've already assembled one just to check I'm happy with everything. It's fixed to the profile fence with a couple of slot head screws for now, as at this point, I'm awaiting delivery of some appropriate length thumb screws. But here I have all the parts for the other one to show you it going together. Starting with the micro adjust side, I grab the body and the length of screw, its head removed to make a threaded rod. In the slot in the body, I slide in a nylock nut. Bit tricky this, I had to sort of roll the nut into the middle and quickly shove the thread into it. When the thread finally engaged the nut, I grip it with pliers and a spanner and tighten the nut until the thread just starts to show out the other side of the nut. Then on goes a washer and the thumb wheel. The thumb wheel is actually meant for M6 thread. I didn't use M6 here as there wouldn't have been enough room for the larger nut in the body. Thanks to a plastic sort of nylock type thing inside it, it's not miles too big for an M5 though. So I added a standard nut to the right side there, which flushes the thumb wheel to the body temporarily. Then, little by little, I cinched the grub screws either side of the thumb wheel to lock it to the threaded bar. The temporary nut gets removed and I make a slight adjustment to the locking nut so the thumb wheel is seated well against the body, but loose enough to freely rotate. Next, I add a small compression spring and a washer. The spring just helps keep the two body pieces taut when the flip stop body is loosened for micro adjust. Now the flip stop body can be screwed on. The flip stop body is a little longer than the micro adjust as it has to have room to receive this thread without running into the hold down thumb screws which run perpendicular. The flip stop screws get a small washer and then the flip stop. Then a larger washer and it can be passed through the body. Then I have the tricky operation again of adding the nylock nut. You all know the deal with these, tighten enough so there's no wobble, just loose enough that you can actually move it. I had at this point just sloped off to make a cup of tea when in a rare stroke of fortuitous timing, Posty delivered my thumb screws. So with tea on hold for now, I can show you the very last step. Thumb screw through its hole in the body, a couple of turns on the flat siding T-nuts and that's it. My new super flip stops are ready for work. Well, actually I did decide to make one last change. You can see here, much like the bench dog ones these are replacing, I did my flip stops 20mm one side, 40mm the other. I thought I'd do that in case I went back to a fence at 40mm height again, but then it occurred to me, why the hell would I do that? I love this fence as it is now, plus if both ends of the stop were 20mm, I could move them from body left to body right, left hand fence or right hand fence without having to undo and turn around the flip stop. The next time you see them, they'll be a little shorter. Here they are then, in place and all finished. I just want to say a bit about the orientation I have them in here. Since I made the upgrade to my fences, I have a recent video on that in case you haven't seen it, I've moved my scale tape from the very front edge to the top of the black piece of profile. This freed up the front slot for my secondary stops and also means the scale marks can be easily read from above against the stop, unlike if I stuck the scale tape to the silver back piece of profile. Now this does mean the locking thumb screws stick out beyond the fence behind the flip stop. I only have 24mm of clearance underneath them, so using a pair of stops together on anything thicker for two different repeat lengths would be an issue. But then, since having this fence, I've not once done that. I've only ever used one stop per side, so I think I can live with this. These don't have to seat in this orientation, it should be said. They will seat normally too, thumb screws top and out of the way. I wanted to show you these as well. These are what I initially made to use as the micro adjust thumb wheel. Made from the same 20mm aluminium round stock, they would have looked pretty cool I think, keeping the round bar look between the two body pieces. However, when you tighten the back part, it essentially locks these thumb wheels in place. I should have foreseen that problem, but hey, we've sorted that problem now. Worth saying in case any of you viewers fancy having a go at something like this, and please give me a shout out if you do, cheers, is that it's worth, by whatever means you have available, making doubly sure the end of the round stock that the flip stop itself attaches to is dead flat. You want your stop standing up straight, or you'll end up thinking your scale is telling you lies. So I think I've rambled on enough, let's get to functionality. Starting with the secondary stop, like I said at the beginning, since having the Hong Dui fence, I love this feature. I know these aren't going to move no matter what I run into it. I love that this is now a feature on my MFT fence. Just to illustrate however, even without my secondary stop, my 8mm thick alley stops are rock solid. Trying to flex them, you can probably see I'm moving the whole bench there. Beast. For using just the micro adjust, with the rear micro adjust body tightened down, you loosen the front flip stop body thumb screw a little, then turn the red thumb wheel whichever way to creep up on your mark, scale or cut, then tighten back down. I'm actually really pleased with how well this works considering I hand drilled all these holes. Obviously to move the whole assembly you undo both the front and rear thumb screws. 
On my left side fence, the scale starts at 200mm. For any cut under that length, I have to use the scale and stop on the right side fence. The body on my flip stops is quite long altogether, and if I move it right to the back of this short fence, you can see I've only got 165mm available. To make the missing few extra mil available, I can just unscrew the micro adjust, separating the two body halves, leaving only the main flip stop. This now opens up all the missing 200 mil from the main fence, and a little more. This short body mode also opens up options for two stop positions close to each other too. Sorry about the poor focus here, but if you needed them closer still, they can just be flipped. I think I can now finally say, thanks to my retractable hinged guide rail, my discreet and solid front pin, my extra stiff fence and under rail fence, and now my micro adjustable and dependable flip stops, I have the MFT cutting system of my dreams. I'm pretty stoked on that. I'd love to know what you think of my flip stops in the comments below. Feel free to ask any questions there too. I hope you found this build interesting, if nothing else. Like if you did, sub if you aren't already. The thanks button is there if you want to show your support for the channel in that way. And as ever, if you made it this far, thanks for watching.